you know, ministers are <clears throat> charged uh, to be an example to the flock. It says that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 3. And it actually says that, that we're to be examples in word, we're to be examples in love, we're to be examples in spirit, we're to be examples in faith. And I just want you to know that we're, dev we're endeavoring to do that. Yes. We're endeavoring to be uh, examples set before you. Pastor Chaz and our lives are uh, an open book because we've surrendered to the Lord. Amen? And, uh, you know, it's said, I've always heard this said by preachers, uh, that it's good to live what you preach. I say it's good to live what you preach scripturally because not all preaching is scriptural. <laughs> Got to rightly divide the word. But it's good to live. We should live what we preach. I mean, when we preach something, when we see something in that word, we should wrap our heart around it, let that word fall upon us or we fall upon it and say, that's it. I'm doing that. I'm being that. I'm having that. I'm, that's me. Amen? But I also say that it's also a good to preach what you scripturally live. Notice that there's scripturally in there again. I think that as preachers, you know, we, we have to preach what's in us. What, what we're living out in the fullness of. And so tonight I, I'm going to endeavor to do a little bit of that for you. You know, it's, the truth is, is that we all ministers, really every disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are striving to live as as true sons and daughters in the faith. Can you say that? Can you agree? And really it's important. Because listen, Christians are watching and non-Christians are watching. They're watching those who proclaim to know God. They're watching us. And proclaiming to know God means living by faith. You do know that, right? When we proclaim to know God, we're proclaiming that we live by faith. And we certainly want our witness to be bold. We want our witness to be powerful. We want, you know, the scripture says in, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, it says, they that know their God. Insinuating that there are people that should know God. Come on, we should know God. He's not a mystery. He doesn't have to be far off. We should know him. I always call it up close and personal. I want to be up close and personal with God. That's how we know Him. And the Bible says that, that those that know their God, they shall be strong. Thank you, Denise. And do great exploits. Hallelujah. We ought to be able to know God. And if we know God, we ought to be able to show God. Right? Know Him and show Him. That's what that, that scripture means. So I'm really excited and happy to know, anchored in this truth, that no matter what, okay, no matter what goes on, no matter what happens in the world, in my life, in the life of other people, no matter what, God, in everything God, the kingdom of God is still the same. Still the same. Nothing has changed. No trials, no tribulations have changed God. No difficulties in the earth, no uh, plagues that come in the world, nothing has changed God or the kingdom of God. God is still the same, nothing has changed. Whew! We can pack our bags up and go home. Jesus is still the same, nothing has changed. The Holy Ghost is still the same, nothing has changed. The Word of God is still the same, nothing has changed. His authority in the earth is still the same, nothing has changed. The power of God present today is still the same, nothing has changed. It all remains real. It all remains true today and tomorrow and next week. That means nothing ruffles us. Nothing ruffles us. And faith 
in God, faith in Him, faith in His Word, faith in the Spirit, come on, faith in His power, faith in His authority, faith in Jesus, is still the same today. Nothing has changed. <laughs> that is like wonderful news. Nothing has changed. Faith in God, faith in Him, it still remains. It's still real. Faith is real. Faith is the substance. Faith is not just a theory. It's not just a concept. Faith is substance. It's real. And it still works today and tomorrow and next week in every situation. No matter what, faith remains. Hallelujah. So, because we know God, because we know the Word, because we know the Spirit, we can stand in faith. Amen? Because of that, we know that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That's, that's the Word of God. Matthew 16, verse 18. That is the Word of God. The gates of hell shall, shall not prevail against the church of the living God. I believe that. I believe that. I'm a faith person. We are faith people. Faith believes. Faith speaks. Faith receives. Uh, is that true? It's true, right? Faith rests. Faith rests. And faith rejoices. How do you know, in, how do you know if you're in faith? Well... Are those things prevalent? Are those things evident? Do you find yourself really believing when a, when a trouble comes, when a, when a report, when a something contrary comes? Do you find yourself believing? Do you find yourself instantly speaking something contrary to that temporary speaking the truth? Do you find yourself receiving? Do you find yourself resting? Whoa. Faith rests, so we could say faith is at peace. I see a lot of non-unpeaceful, non not peaceful Christian lives. Faith is at peace, and faith is also in the joy. Faith is in joy. When you're really in faith, you're just happy. It, it really, nothing else matters. It doesn't matter. You can just laugh. You can smile. Amen. So don't ever forget that, you know, our faith is really attached to... Faith is of the kingdom. It's this side of heaven. Faith is the reality. Uh, it brings the reality of the kingdom into the earth. And it's attached to righteousness, peace, and joy. Remember that? Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God... The flow of the kingdom, the atmosphere of the kingdom, the culture of the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. That means the flow of God, the, the things of God work in the culture or work in the atmosphere or they work in the flow of heaven. So it means that your faith works from the, from the stance of righteousness, knowing who God is and who you are in Him. That's where your faith is anchored. And also attached to, to your faith is that because we know who He is and we know who we are in Him, we have an assurance from His Word and therefore we can be at peace. And because we're at peace and we're steady and we're secured, we're not flimsy floppy and we're not roller coastering around, we're steady. Then we can be joyful. Because we already know the end from the beginning. So faith is connected to righteousness, peace, and joy. And you need to make sure that in your life you are living in the place of righteousness, peace, and joy. That that would describe you. It would describe your life. This life with God is all about a life of faith. Can we agree? Okay, the Bible says this. Well, let me say this. If, we're to, if, if it's about a life of faith, but the Bible also tells us there's the fight of faith, right? We know that. 
There is a fight of faith. We have to fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight, but there is a fight. Well, in a fight, you always have what? You always have an opposition. You always have an enemy. And so faith has an enemy. Faith has an enemy. And the enemy of faith is fear. You got to remember that. You got to remember that. That's important that you remember that. Because just because you automatically got saved and, you know, you, you walked down the aisle and you gave your life to Jesus and you're reading your Bible and all, doesn't mean that in every situation you've entered into the fullness of faith. It's a fight. It's a fight to get in faith. But we can win that fight. It's a good fight because we win it. The Bible says that as Christians we are to live by faith. But faith and fear are opposites, right? So if we live by faith, then we die by fear. <laughs> now listen, don't think, don't think body death, because you know, Adam and Eve, the, the Bible, the Lord told them, they say, he said, if you eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, you're going to die. But they remained in the earth. You, re you remember that, right? Something happened on the inside of them. Listen, fear will bring death of some Death of a dream, death of a promise, death of, of healing, death of whatever it is that you need. So we live by faith, but we die by fear. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says this. It says that we overcome the world by our faith, right? Christians are called to live victoriously. We're called to live in the victory. God always causes us to triumph. But the Word says that we overcome by our faith. So if we overcome by faith, then we're overtaken by fear. Just going to show you some opposites. If we win by faith, then we lose by fear. Okay? This faith life, it's a really big deal. Because the life with God is all about a life of faith and we live in a culture, we live in a world that is totally contrary to that. The culture of this world is fear-based. Everything is about fear. Everything. Everything, every ad you listen to, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, you turn on the radio, it's there. You turn on the TV, it's there. You, you try talking with most people. Anybody that's really not living tightly in the kingdom, and it's all about fear. Listen, fear is not just the overwhelming panic that takes you. That is fear, but it's, it's more than that. Fear includes doubt. Every time you're doubtful, about is God going to do something? Is this, is this promise really going to happen in my life? Is God going to come through for me? That's fear. Fear includes worry. All those little nagging things that keep you awake at night. Your mind racing because you're, you're thinking about something. Come on, you're worried about your job. You're worried about your money. You're worried about your health. You're worried about your kids. You're worried about your marriage. You're worried about not being married. You're, I mean, it, the, the list goes on and on and on. Everything is constantly at us like this from this world, but we don't live in the world. We live in the kingdom, and so we have to cultivate a faith-based culture in our own life. We have to be constantly catching ourselves with thoughts and constantly watching our words to make sure that faith is where we're at, that faith is what we're believing, that faith is what we're expressing. Because faith and fear... Opposites, enemies, and they don't ever exist. Okay? So tonight, listen, I just, I just want to remind you of some things about faith versus fear. This is my life. This is something I can talk to you about. Because it's what I live. And I want all of you to live it too. I want every life in here to be, to be able to say, with all honesty, I live a fearless life. I don't have things that keep me up at night. I don't have things that, that make me worry. I don't have things, you know, stress and all that kind of stuff. We get to be free of that, glory to God. Hallelujah, we get to be free of it. Turn with me over to uh, Mark chapter 4. Let's start there. We'll just see tonight. I mean, we could, I could preach for, for months 
on the topic of fear. But we'll just see tonight where the Lord wants to go. But I just want to show you the reality that faith and fear don't coexist. And this is really, 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 really important because if the Bible says that we get the victory by our faith and we know that faith and fear don't coexist, it means where fear is, faith isn't. I'm going to say it again. Where fear is, any degree of fear, any type of fear, where fear is, faith isn't. And we need to understand that we cannot deceive ourselves by thinking, I can have a little bit of worry, I can have a little bit of doubt, but I know what the scripture says, and I, I'm, I'm just going to believe God because it's okay, to have a little, it's okay to have a little worry. I mean, everybody worries. I mean, I grew up worrying, you know, everybody worries. It's just part of living. No, it's not part of Christian living. Worrying is not. And so it's not okay to have a little worry or a little fear or a little doubt and say, well, I have faith too. You don't because if you just said that, you contradicted the Bible. So let's read this story here in Mark chapter 4. We're going to read verse 35 through verse 40. It says, on the same day when evening had come, he being Jesus, had said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Okay, you need to understand that Jesus had, had given them a word. He had said something to them. Okay? Verse 36. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the winds beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he, Jesus, was in the stern asleep on a pillow. Total peace. Totally at rest. He, Jesus was in faith. Jesus has, had already given a word. He had already said, we're going to the other side. We're taking the boat, we're crossing to the other side. That was a word from him. He didn't need a whole bunch of other stuff. He didn't need a whole bunch of reminders. He just said, we're going to the other side. So in his heart, it was already settled. They were starting on one side and they were going to the other side and it didn't matter anything that was in between. Nothing. He was, he was about in the back asleep. You ever felt like that? You feel like you're in the biggest storm of your life? I mean, everything around you is raging. I mean, everything, everything that's going on is contrary to, to what you're aiming for, to what, what you know needs to be. And you're like, where is Jesus? Totally at rest. Still standing on the promise. Still standing on the one word that he gave you. Doesn't have to give you 40 words. Doesn't have to give you words over and over. When, it, when he says it, if you can believe it, come on, that's what he's wanting is you to have faith in that word. And it says, they woke him and he said, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And then he arose and he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith? Do you see what Jesus just said? Jesus, Jesus, the giver of truth, said, if you have fear, you have no faith. That's what Jesus said. Being fearful means that you have no faith. And you need to understand this because faith is where your authority comes from. Faith is where your power comes from. Faith is where your victory comes from. Faith is where your seeing the promise made manifest in your life comes from. It comes from faith, which means having no fear. And I, you know, I know most of y'all know this, but I just want to remind you of the, of the encounter that I had. You know, I knew that scripture, uh, but then I had an encounter with the Lord that kind of drove home the reality of that for me. And it was many years ago, I was, I was on a trip, I was out of the country, I was actually in Africa, and uh, I laid down to go to bed at night. We had had a full day of ministry uh, we were, I was sleeping in a top bunk bed. Somebody was under the bunk bed beneath me. I had another 
person on the team that was across the room in a bed and I laid down to go to sleep and everything was fine and all of a sudden I woke up uh, somewhere in the middle of the night to this tremendous uh, vibration and uh, I, I sat up in bed and my, my bed was violently, I mean violently trembling. So much so that the next morning when we got up, the, the, whatever the peg is that sticks down on the bunk bed was completely out on one side. So my bed was violently trembling. And as I sat up, I, I glanced down at the end of my bed and a demon was at the end of my bed. I mean, it was no doubt it was a demon. It was ugly. It, was, it had red glaring eyes that felt like, felt, I didn't even want to look because it felt like those eyes were going to burn right through me. And so my first thought, you know, as most people, is like, Lord, please don't let this be happening. And so I'm thinking I'm in a dream. I'm thinking I'm in a dream. And so I begin to hit myself and pinch myself, you know, to wake, you ever done that? To wake yourself up in the dream? I want to wake up here. And so I was hitting myself and pinching myself, but the more I hit and the more I pinched, the worse it hurt. And I realized that I was not in a dream, <laughs> that, it, that this was real. And all of a sudden, you know, I have this demon at the end of my bed and it's trembling my bed and, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, don't let it come any closer. Don't, don't let it come any closer. And so I begin to kind of search inward, you know, what, what do I do? What do I do here? And my first thought was, wow, I've got friends here. Come on. You know, I look down and th her bed is like completely still. You know, she's completely asleep. This one's over there asleep. And I wanted to cry out to them, you know, wake up, you know, kind of like they did with Jesus here, you know, wake up. But, but I felt restrained by the Holy Spirit. It was, like, it was like the Lord would let me reach out for them for help. And then it just dawned on me that this was it. It was me and the demon. It was me and hopefully Jesus versus the demon. This was the moment. There was, there was no help of friends. This was the moment where I was going to have to know something and apply something enough to keep this thing certainly from coming any closer, but I just wanted it gone. I just wanted it gone. And so I begin, you know, inward in, and I kind of like, you know, really kind of frantically, frantically, what do I do? What do I do? Oh, 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 I remember, I remember, I remember there's power in the name of Jesus. I mean, I know that. There was scripture after scripture. You know, he's been given a name that is highly exalted, a name that is above every name. You know, that at the name of Jesus, everything will bow. I mean, I know that. So I'm inward. I'm thinking, oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. And, and the scripture says that if I resist him, he must flee. So inwardly, inwardly, the, the, the scriptures, the things of God are, are coming up to me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I just said it. You know, I just looked and I just said, in the name of Jesus, go. From the inside of me, hoping, whew, hoping that this was going to work. Come on, this is what the scripture says. Hoping it's going to work. Well, you know what? It just stood there. Shaking my bed looking at me with those eyes, and, I, and, and so I'm like, what, what, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 this is what the scripture says. Come on, this is what the Bible says. Come on, I know that this has got to work, right? I mean, I mean, th th this is it. I mean, so I looked up again, and I said, in the name of Jesus, go. And it just stood there, and, and I mean, this is the moment. So all of a sudden, on the inside of me, I start to think, wait a minute. Come on, this is the word of God. This is the scripture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, this is real. Come on, there is more power in the name of Jesus than anything that can mess with me at my bed. Come on, the scripture says that when I resist him, he will flee. I mean, he, he is going to have to flee. And at that moment, I felt like, like the Holy Spirit was taking hold of the inside of me. He was taking hold in that word of the Lord, the scripture, the truth was beginning to come up. It, it, was begin, it was faith. Faith was beginning to come up in me. And as it was coming up, all of the fear, all of the worry, all of the hoping that it was working, be a little anxious, I was a little concerned. Come on, I had a demon standing at the edge of my bed. This was the first such encounter for me. But as that faith, I mean, as the Holy Ghost took hold of that word and my faith, it began to rise up in me and I began to feel. Then I recognized that really I wasn't quite in faith. 
I was saying the right scripture. I was doing the right thing. I knew in my head what it was saying. I was going through the motions, but really I was doing it from the just the slightest bit of, of a little anxious, just the slightest little bit of a little worry and a little concern. But oh no, now, now faith is rising up. Now everything of fear, uh, 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 the devil can't mess with me. And so I'm thinking in my mind, that's it. You know, I'm kind of dramatic. I know y'all know that. I'm thinking I'm going to jump down off of my bed. I'm going to stand like Superman. I'm going to stretch out my, you know, I'm thinking this dramatic. And then all of a sudden, before I could do any of that, I just shouted, go in Jesus' name. And instantly it departed. Instantly it departed. I learned something. I learned something. See, remember, I knew the scriptures. I said the scriptures. I did what the scriptures said to. I was believing the scriptures. I was believing them to the best, to the best of my ability. But yet, I had some fear. And really, because I had fear, I had no faith. And this is where I just, I find that a lot of Christians live in thinking that they can have some fear and, and some faith and still be okay. Still have the power come, still have the authority. My words, no matter what words I said, no matter how many times I used the name of Jesus, no matter how many scriptures I said, until those words were backed by faith, nothing was going to happen. It's a reality check. We have to be really honest with ourselves. We can't just continue to be worried and concerned and fretful and anxious and, you know, and just think that it's okay. People will tell you, no, all you got to have is just a little bit of faith, just a little bitty mustard seed of faith. Well, that's really not what mustard seed faith is. You can have just a little bit of faith, but you be, if you have a little bit of faith, you still got to have no fear. Because where fear is, faith isn't. And we have to know that. The other thing that I learned from this encounter was that the spirit world knows. The spirit world knows. The spirit that was at the end of my bed, that demon, even though I was saying go, using the name of Jesus, it knew that I had fear and not faith. Wow. Wow. You know, we always say that God knows. God knows all things, and He does. But the spirit world knows things too. The angels know things. The demons know things. And so we can't, we, we can't be tricking the spirit world. We can't be fooling the spirit world. We can't have a bunch of stuff down in here and just act like, you know, I'm just going to put it on in the outward shell and I'm just going to walk around and, and say the right thing and do the right thing. No, the spirit world knows. And so we're going to have to be really diligent about eliminating all of the fear out of our life because it's either faith or fear. I know a lot of you have heard a lot of this already, but, you know, sometimes we just need to be put in remembrance. Listen, we're living in a time right now, there's always been fear. I mean, as far back as I can remember, there's been a lot of fear in the world. Listen, if people don't know God, if they don't have a covenant with God, if they don't have the assurity of protection, uh, the assurity of long life, uh, of health, of any of that, they ought to be scared. I, I mean, the world ought to be scared. And they ought to be scared for eternity because eternity's coming. And they're going to be one place or the other based on the decision they made in the earth. So I, I, I know that the world is always going to be in fear. But that fear of the world, you know, it tries to creep in on the church. It tries to creep in. And listen, there is fear right now. When this virus thing came, I saw, I saw a whole level of fear released that I have never seen in the earth. I mean, it has worked to, to do a number. And to do a number on the church. So we got to get really, really, really real here. We got to get really, really, really real here. We got to get real. I'm going to say it even with the coronavirus. We have to get real. We have to eliminate fear about that. Fear that I'm going to get it. Fear that I'm going to get it again. Fear that it's going to overtake me. Fear, blah, fear of my kids. Fear. We're going to have to get over that. Or else we're not going to have any victory. And we have to believe that the name of Jesus 
is greater than any coronavirus. Weather, listen, listen, we have to believe that, but we can't partially believe that and partially wonder if it's gonna work. That is not how it works. And it's why, honestly, we're in the state that we're in. Wow. But we're gonna have to tackle, I mean, this thing head on. Uh, the, you know, the, the coronavirus, so what the coronavirus? Use your faith to believe you're not going to get it. Do the best you can, absolutely. And then if you get it, if you get it, so what? Use your faith to get over it. Just like it comes, it passes. That's what I tell people. If it came, let it pass. But listen, there's still power in the name of Jesus. Either there's power in the name or there's not. There's not only just power for some things, but not for COVID-19. I'm really, really, I mean, I mean I'm, don't get me riled up. Because this could really, this could really like, this could really like set me off. Because we need to be the place where we so radically believe that COVID can't live in our existence, that people ought to be, I, I would rather people be able to flock to this place with COVID. You just come right up here and we'll just put the life of God on you and watch it go. We amen, we amen that, but truth is we ain't believing that. Do y'all want to move on to something else? But th th this is a big deal to God. Fear not is a big deal to God. How many times in the Bible does it say in some phrase or terminology, fear not, don't be afraid, don't be troubled? 365 times. Don't you think God knew the world that we were living in, that every day we get up, fear, 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 fear. Oh, but there's a word, there's a word from God today, fear not. Oh, oh, here comes tomorrow. Oh, I get up tomorrow and stuff. Oh, no, I got another word from God. Don't be afraid. Oh, yeah, and then the next day. It just goes on and on and on. When God said fear not, he meant it. It wasn't just like a, a nice concept. And listen, I, I want to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, because I grew up with all kinds of fears. I grew up thinking that fear was normal. I grew up with fear of the dark. I mean, when I was a 30-year-old woman and I was in a room, a dark room by myself, I would have to have a nightlight. Not, not all things do you outgrow. I was scared of dying. I was scared of was going to get in a car wreck. I, was, I mean, the list could go on. As a matter of fact, I worked myself into a bleeding ulcer. I was so fearful and had so much stress and just from life. All, of course, before I knew, getting spirit-filled for me was the, it was the thing that set me on course. When I got spirit-filled, the Lord said, that's it. I'm going to teach you to live about the kingdom. And the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to get rid of all the fear. And I mean, I, I went on an, on an all-out assault. And listen, and it didn't happen overnight. I didn't get to just say the scripture one time. I had to chip away with it. I mean, the things that were buried down in my soul, the things that I had always worried about and just were there, I had to chip away with those things at the Word. With the Word, I mean, with the Word, I would lay in bed at night with my lamp on with the Word of God, saying the Word, saying the Word, saying the Word, saying the Word, until no fear. Then I would turn off the light, saying the Word, saying the Word, saying the Word, saying the Word, until no fear. I had to chip away with it. But you know what the Bible says in Jeremiah 23, 29, that the word is like a hammer. Yeah. And it breaks the rocks. I mean, that I was using that word to hammer. Chip away, chip away, chipping away. You need to chip away at some of the things in your life. Some of the fears, the worries, the concerns, the dreads. You're going to have to use the word. If you've got things in your soul, two classes of fear... One is soul-based fear, the other is spirit-based fear. So soul-based fears are things that get, get in your soul. Many times you grow up with them, they come from your upbringing, they come from your background, you're taught them. Uh, many times things happen in your life, traumatic experiences, and things, things they get in your soul. Those fears have to have a word encounter. 
You have to get the word of God in your heart, in your soul, where it is greater than that fear that you've had there. Let the word be engrafted into us. Chip it away. Let the word chip it, chip it all away. The word is like water. The word is like the washing of the water. Come on, when you got stuff, when, it, when it's dirty, you don't just, you know, you got something that's really, like you, you've had it in a long time. You've been out in the mud. I mean, you, you got mud, it got stained. Now you let it dry. Now it's caked in there. It's soaked, saturated. I mean, it's just crusty now. You try to clean that, you don't go like this. You know, this is the water. That didn't do the job. It was a start. Right? Did did y'all see over here? Do I need to do the analogy over here for the spigot? No. That's a start. It is the start. First of all, that you knew to go to the water. Praise God. You got to know to go to the Word. You can have happy thoughts. You can have wish it could go away. People, I've sat in my office so many times and people will say, I just wish it would go away. You know, and they're talking about their struggle. Their struggle and their worry about their their money or their worry about their kids or their, you know, whatever it is. And I just look at them and say, it's not gonna. Is that pastoral? It's not gonna. The truth is, is the devil... Who is the author of fear? Just like God is the author of faith, Jesus is the author of our faith. The devil is the author of fear. Even fears that get in our soul, he is the author of them. We have to understand that he's going to try to bring those things to you. He's going to try to get those things to you. And you have to know what is your answer. What is the source? The source is that you have to run to the word. And then you have, to, you have to run to the Word and you have, to, you have to hold it under that water. And then something happens, you've got to go do something, I'll come back, okay, okay, but now here I am again. I'm not going to act like everything's okay. I understand I've still got something that needs to be clean. i still got fear that needs to, to be broken off of my life. Here I am, I'm with the, I'm with the Word again. And this is why many Christians don't get the victory over these kind of things. Because we won't, we, won't, we won't stay at it long enough. It took me a long time to get rid of fear. But God was, he, I mean, he was just determined. And I can say this, I've, I've lived in fear and I've lived in faith. I've lived in fear and I've lived without fear. And living without fear is just a whole lot better. And it's available to every, every believer. This is what God intends for us, is that we can be free of fear. So we have those types of fears that have to have a word encounter. But then we have some people deal with spirit-based fears, fears that are really of a spirit, a demonic spirit, a spirit of fear, whatever it might be that at times comes upon you, anxiety attacks, things like that. I used to have night, I call them night terrors, you know, when I would have very, very, very bad dreams. I mean, like wake up in a, in a fit of rage, you know, vibrating and shaking and freaking out and running around my, you know, Everybody thought I was normal. Nobody knew the torment that that went from the fear that I lived with. And then when I got spirit-filled, thank God, but I got spirit-filled and so I opened up to the whole uh, realm of the spirit and then I I had visitations, demonic visitations in my room every night, every night. I hated to go to bed because every night I had demonic visitations. But I was determined And you know what? I won. The power of God in me won. The Holy Spirit with me won. But it didn't take me just doing it one time. But I didn't give up on it. Come on, first of all, I wanted it so badly. You got to want to live by faith. You got to really want to be free of your fear. I mean, want it to where you're, you're willing to do whatever it takes to get there. I wanted it just that badly. And number two, I believed that I could have it. 
Anytime I said something and used the word and it didn't exactly happen in that, I didn't think this isn't working. I thought this is the process. Boy, uh, there it was held under the water again. More of it came off. I remember the very last night that I had that visitation. I've not had a demonic visitation like that where it messed with me. I've had things come with people and stuff like that. But I'm talking about where it was messing with me. I remember the last night that it happened. And I, I just knew that this was it. I knew this time when I said it. I knew it. I had been months doing this. But I stayed with it because I knew the truth that there's power in the name of Jesus. Either this is going to work for me or I'm not going to be a Christian anymore. Have you ever put your faith on that line? With God? And that was it. That night when those, I, I couldn't wait for those things to show up. I can still describe them, what they look like. I couldn't wait for them to show up. I was ready. You know, in the beginning, being honest, I was so new to the spirit realm. In the beginning, I wasn't sure what it was. I wasn't sure if it was angels. I wasn't sure because, I've, you know, I've seen angels too. And I was, but then I begin, they began to bother me. It was like it would be bothersome. And they wouldn't let me sleep. And then they would, you know, we don't need to go on all that. But that last night, that was it. I used the name of Jesus. They departed. I mean, instantly they departed. And, and I remember at that time, they were one section of my room. <laughs> And the minute they disappeared, I went, <gasps> and, and I happened to look at my, at my doorway, and in my doorway standing was my guardian angel. And it, I, it, didn't say, it didn't say a thing to me. I'd seen it many times before. I know exactly what it looks like. It didn't say a thing to me, but it was standing there. And it was like, I, I just knew. I was like, this is it. We're not, we're not dealing with this anymore. And I've never, ever, ever had another visitation of fear. It was all fear-based for me. Fear was the part of, of all of it. It was all connected to fear. And when I got rid of all my fears, praise God. So you're, the spirit-based fears, are, they have to have a power encounter. It, there's, there's different. I mean, when you're dealing with the spirit, you have to cast it out. You have to resist it with, with power and authority. But I mean, this is it. We are the church. God is calling us to live by faith, and I'm talking about radical. As the, as the days go, and the Bible says that gross darkness is going to cover the earth. Darkness and gross darkness is going to cover the people. But we are people of the light. But it's going to take a radical, it's going to take a radical faith. But we can do it. Come on, we've been given the tools. Listen, we've got power tools of the kingdom. The Bible says that our tools are not carnal. 2 Corinthians, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, I think. Come on. That our weapons are not carnal. They're not natural. But they are mighty in God. Come on. We have the blood of Jesus. Come on. We have the name of Jesus. Glory. We have the word of God. Come on. We have the Holy Spirit. We're not, we're not doing this alone. God didn't just throw us down here and say, do it alone. But you're going to have to get some, some scriptures, some things anchored in you about why you can live in faith and have no fear. Let me just throw a couple of scriptures out that I really like. Isaiah 41 chapter 10 says, Fear not, this is God speaking, Fear not, for I am with you. God is with us. Do not be dismayed. That's, that's really being discouraged. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I can do all things through Christ who... I can do what things? What things? I can do all things. That's why we don't fear. Because God said, I'm going to strengthen you. And because I strengthen you, you're going to win. You're going to overcome. You're going you're to outrun it. You're going to leap over the wall, whatever it is. He says, yes, I will help you. That's like all-encompassing, whatever kind of help you need. Whatever it is you need, God said, I will help you. 
I mean, that's a word from heaven. If you could just take that one word and run with it. If you could just get that one word in your heart that God has said he'll help me. Oh, I got in trouble today. Oh, but God said he'd help me. That's it. God said he'd help me. God, I call upon my helper. Lord, thank you for helping me right now. I just speak your help into this situation. Woo! Thank you, Lord. I will uphold you. I will uphold you. He will hold you up. He will cause you to not fail. He will cause you to not fall down. He'll cause nobody to be over rod shy. How do you say that? There you go. Nobody gets just a roll, steamroll right over you. If you can believe this. And now we're back to faith. These can't just be words. These can't just be a nice scripture. These can't be just something I quote. These have to be in you. These have to be the reality in your heart. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When they talk about the right hand of God, it's the hand of power. So it's the power of God that's upholding you. We like that scripture in Peter, right? It says, I'm kept by the power of God. How about this scripture in Psalm 23? Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I've never understood why we use this for funerals. This is not a funeral scripture. Nobody at a funeral is walking through the valley of the shadow of death. They are either in death or they are in life at that moment. This is written to us. Yea, though you walk around all the time as a child of light, there's darkness all, all around you. There's darkness, there's troubles, there's trials, there's bad stuff. There's all kind of ungodly things. There's all the things of the curse all around you all the time. But guess what? We're walking through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We will fear no evil. No evil. For you are with me. This is why it helps to have a reality of, of the presence of God in your life. Now, He's there whether you can feel Him or sense Him or not. But, but again, it's about a truth. It's about having anchored in you that God is with me. And, and again, I'm talking about radical faith. I'm talking about I don't care that I'm a woman... I don't care if I'm by myself. I don't care if I'm at night. I don't care if I'm in a bad neighborhood. I don't care if my car breaks down I have to get out. I don't care. I'm, y'all, y'all looking at me like, I'm, I'm telling y'all. Now, you know, I'm speaking. God is hearing me, so I'm accountable to God for what I'm saying. I don't care. It does not bother me. I will get out of the car. I will do whatever because God is with me. My angels are with me. Nothing is going to mess with me. I don't have to be scared of any gang because I got the Holy Ghost gang. I'm me and the Holy Ghost. We are the Holy Ghost gang. I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't phase me. And this is how you have to live because you know the story of Job. The thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. Fear is the thing that opens the door to the very thing that you fear. Fear is what opens the door to the devil, to evil, to bad stuff, to all the stuff that you're trying to avoid. So we got to keep the door of fear closed. Open the door of faith in God. Live in that room. Live in that arena. Amen. Thank you, Elaine. Amen. Amen. Listen, and there's, there's times where, you know, we need this stuff. We've been on trips before. Where when you looked around, it'd be like, People ask me all the time, and I understand their question, but I'm just going to tell you what they ask me. They say, well, how do you as a white female travel all over the world by yourself? They ask me that. All church people ask me that all the time. Well, the way that I do it is because that's what God's called me to do, and because God's called me to do it, God has to uphold me. God has to be my protector. He has to be my keeper. He, he has to, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they don't like women, which a lot of them don't. Even a lot of American churches don't like women. Right. 
This is what God's called us to. I just wanted to put you in remembrance tonight. You know what Peter said? He said, as long as I'm in this tent, I'm going to remind you of some things. This is part of, this is part of my living an example for you. This is part of my uh, pastoral oversight of your life. And when I get to heaven, I, I want the Lord to say, you know what, you did, a, you did a good job, well done in teaching your people to live by faith. Well done in teaching them to not let any fear creep into their life for any reason, under any circumstance. Well done in helping them rightly discern and know that faith and fear never exist at the same time. And I have to say that that would be a great delight of that would be a great delight of my heart to hear the Lord say that. But I tell you what, a great de de delight, a great delight of my heart in this realm would be to see you living by faith. That would be the delight of my heart because that's that's what God's intent for you is. The just are called to live by faith, scared of nothing. Fear is never warranted. It's never okay. God actually told me that one time. He said, my people are, he said, my people are living with fear and they think it's normal. Then he went on to say, but it's eating them alive. That's what he told me. He said, it's eating them alive. And then I, you know, I, I thought about the scripture in 1 Peter chapter 5. The devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And I thought, my gosh, what, how, ooh, what it would be like to be eaten alive. Do you know how painful that would be? I mean, you know, if you got to go, let's go quickly. Let's go, just something, boom, and you're out of there. I mean, not like where your rims are being lipped apart and your flesh. I mean, that would be so painful. But God said that's what fear does to our lives. He said it's eating people alive. He said they're living with it, thinking it's normal. And then I thought about that, you know, how it's, pain, it's, it's bad enough for yourself, but then when you see your family go through, you know, we love family. We don't want to see family hurt. We don't want to see family. I mean, you know what it's like when a family member's sick. You're like, ah. Oh. But we're God's family. And God has to sit by, God has to sit in heaven knowing that he's given us every tool we need. And he's having to sit in heaven watch us being eaten up alive by fear. Shouldn't be so. Shouldn't be so. Hallelujah. Are we happy? This is good stuff. You know, I, I know y'all know this is all in my book, and I, I, I try to preach it quite some, a lot. This is the one message that God makes me preach everywhere all over the world. It's like sometimes I, I go and I'm like, I'm going to, and he's like, preach on Help them get rid of fear. I mean, and I have seen some drastic results with people getting rid of fear. I mean, drastic stuff. I'm talking about people that are on medications every day for years and still have anxiety attacks. And in just one moment, they're totally free. But I really feel tonight, I really feel tonight in my heart with the Lord that, that you need to understand about some of those soul-based fears. Once the devil finds a weakness in your life, he puts his finger on it. And you can say, oh, Lord, make it go away. Oh, please, uh, I just want this to go away. I want this to change. But the devil, this is not what's going to happen. You're going to have to pry his finger off of that, off of that worry, off of that concern, off of that anxiousness, off of that doubt, off of that whatever it is, you're going to have to pry his finger off with the Word of God. When you seek the Lord with your whole heart, you find him. There's no, half, there's no halfway stuff in the kingdom. You're either going to have faith or you're going to have fear. There's no, there's no halfway stuff. Two realms. Either or. One or the other. Are y'all with me? Isn't there a scripture that says this, Pastor Chaz, you would know probably somewhere in Acts. It says that, that your faith, that the faith of this people or the faith of this church sounded out or, or went out. I'd like Houston Faith Church to be known as that. I mean, I mean those people, hey. 
I mean, those are some radical faith people. I mean, I'm all for that. I don't mind anybody shaking their head. I don't mind their eyes getting big. As long as, with their, as, as, long as it's a scriptural truth about us. But I mean, I want when you're out and about, I mean, I want your life to be so full of faith. Are we in it? Are you in it with me? I'm, I'm endeavoring to help you as best I can. No fear. No fear. No fear under any circumstance. No, no categories. No bugs. No bugs. From the girl that used to, I used to have the, I used to, this was when I was getting free of fear, but I wasn't there quite all the way yet. And I would have a, a bug in my room. You know, I was a single woman, so it was like no man at the house to do it, okay? And so there would be a bug, and I hated bugs. I mean, I, because partly because they were part of my night terrors. That was part of my night terrors is that bugs would bow me and weird things. And so in the natural, I hated them. And so if there was a bug, I would be like, Okay, in the name of Jesus. And I would I draw a bloodline. I draw because I couldn't go close enough to it to, to kill it or to squish it or to do anything with it. I draw a bloodline in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, that did work for the rats in Haiti, I will say. Because they were too high for me to get to. But I did I did have to I drew a bloodline around my bed at night so that I could sleep because the rats would crawl into the tops of the windows. Praise God. Hey, listen. You need some, some opportunities to use your faith. You need to, these opportunities. But I would get, I'd be like, there's a blood. In the name of Jesus, you know, and, that, and I would try like for four or five days to keep that bug in that same, that same space, just hoping that I curse you in the name of Jesus. I curse, you know. But you know what happened? You know why it never worked? Because I had fear. And so this was very late in the process. I really think, you know, by this time I thought I was completely fear. I mean, I was fearless. Life was wonderful. And one day I got up. By this time I was married to Pastor Chaz. And, uh, yeah. And so, you know, I, bugs didn't scare me. And they didn't scare me anymore. I didn't freak out. I didn't scream. You know, I didn't whatever. But I just really still didn't like them. And I thought, well, that's okay. You know, I'm a girl. It's okay for girls to not like bugs. That was kind of how I reconciled it. But one day I got up and I was walking through my kitchen and I looked over and there was a spider on the floor. And when I looked over, I went, oh, didn't, didn't scare me. But I went, oh, and the Lord said, that's fear, deal with it. And when the Lord said that to me about that spider on the ground, and I, with my finger, and I've been squishing bugs ever since. <laughs> I mean, I, I instantly got delivered in that moment, just that little bitty thing. Well, no, it's really not. Even though I'm a girl, it's not okay to not like bugs. I've walked into Africa. I walked in one time, I had to go to the restroom, and I walked into the restroom, and I'm not kidding you. They have these big spiders. They're like this big, and they're like black, and they're like, they're ugly creatures. And they were all over the restroom wall. And I'm like, ah, well, there you go. Let's just walk in. Come on. Living by faith. Living by faith. If I can do it, you can do it. Amen. The Lord let there be a bug in every... No, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. But I am going to pray for you. I am going to pray for you for some faith opportunities. You need some faith opportunities. You don't really know what you're made of. Just like that night in the bed with the demon at the end of my thing. I would have thought I would have been okay, but I had to anchor myself down and learn some things. Amen.